Welcome back to the Bluegrass and it's beautiful May day. It's about 87 degrees and this 87 degree weather put me in the mood to make a water video. I know when summer rolls around, a lot of you are going to take your puppies and you're going to go to the lake or you're going to go kayaking down the river or you're going to open your pool and you're going to expect for the puppy to be able to get in there and play with the family. We're going to talk about just a few little safety precautions that I think you need to take before you do that, okay? Uh, so that was my idea for a video today, and my beautiful cameraman said, Hey, Stoney, you know what? I bet they would also like to see what you've been doing with Jazzy. Now, Jazzy's a little Jack Russell Terrier that's been staying with me, and uh, she's a little bitty short dog. Okay, and so one of the things that we run into sometimes is we have a tall owner and a short dog, or maybe a kind of a short dog, but an owner that has uh, maybe a bad back or a bad hip or a bad knee. The, the height disparity makes some of the food work training techniques kind of hard to employ. In those cases, we use a targeting stick. Okay, now what this becomes is just an extension of your body. We teach the puppy to kind of follow the stick around instead of our hands so we don't have to bend over so much. So I'm just going to give you kind of a quick little overview of what that looks like before we get in the pool and start doing the water work. Oh, come on, Jazzy. So basically all that happened was uh, when Jazzy got here a couple of weeks ago, I started teaching her to follow the stick around. Okay. Now, in the beginning stages, every time she would catch the stick, then uh, I would uh, tell her that I was happy with her and uh, give her a treat. That's really all there was to it, you know. And then we came out on the course, and every time she would negotiate an obstacle successfully, I would give her a treat. Okay. Now, over the course of a few weeks, what I've done is instead of giving her a treat at each obstacle, watch, we start to string the obstacles together a little bit at a time and uh, make her do two or three obstacles for one treat. So like right there, she just did three obstacles, she gets one treat. Okay. Now remember, if you give them a fat treat, you have to give them time to eat. Easy. So watch, this time we'll do four. One, we'll count this big one. Uh, as a single, so that's two, three, four, and she gets a treat. Very nice. Up. And then you can start to add in whatever vocal cues you want, like if you want them to wait, that's pretty easy. You know, if you want to tell them to be careful about what they're doing, you can tell them like easy. Very nice. Oh, where are you going, Jazzy? Up, 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 up. Tell them to climb stuff when you want. Easy on the way down. Good. Tell them to get up on your exam table. Good. You can tell them to sit. Very nice. You can tell them to go down your slide. Oh, go down the slide. Get back on the table. Very nice. You can tell them to spin. Oh, spin. <laughs> Very nice. You can make them spin twice, once, twice. <laughs> All right, well, that's what you do with the target stick, okay? So if you're real tall or if you have a bad back, uh, grab you a target stick and get to work. Now, on to the main part of the video today. Okay, so now we've moved over to the pool, and what we're going to do is work on a little bit of anti-panic training. Panic is what really gets a dog, or a person for that matter, in trouble when they're in the water, okay? So we're going to think in terms of two separate situations, both of which pop up a lot during the summertime. Number one, sometimes a dog will get in a pool, and even though there are steps out of the pool, the dog will panic and paddle to the deep end and try to get out and up over the side and get fatigued and, you know, unfortunately, sometimes not make it. Okay, same thing happens in a lake, but kind of a little bit differently. So let's just pretend that this was a lake or a river and you're in your boat and you're being safe. So you're over here and you're pretty close to one bank. If your dog falls out of the boat on this side of the boat or your boat capsizes for some reason and your dog ends up on this side of the boat, what it will see is the far bank. Well, that far bank might look close from the dog's perspective, but in reality, maybe it's a quarter of a mile or a half mile away and they do not have the endurance needed to make it to the far side, okay? Very few dogs will fall out of a boat and then, you know, make a well-reasoned evaluation of where the safest route to uh, the bank is, okay? They kind of just fall out and panic, and wherever they see ground, they start swimming in that direction. Same thing happens in a pool, okay? So this is a super simple exercise you can do in a pool or in shallow water, okay, to help your dog learn not to panic, Okay, and to find you or find a safe way out of the situation. All right, now Jazzy is going on our pretend boat. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and get in here with her. 
Okay, just to let her know she's not alone. Very nice, Jazzy. Okay, so you guys have watched my kayaking videos before, and you see how I get the dogs out and uh, just kind of like, you know, kind of let them get used to being in the kayak. And uh, we kind of push the kayak around, move it out, bring it back in. We'll spin it around a little bit. Okay, and all we're doing is kind of getting the dog used to the different movements of the water. Okay, now here's where the anti-panic training comes in. Okay, at some point, like if you've done much kayaking or if you've done much uh, boating or really if you've hung around <laughs> with very many mean kids, you know that sometimes uh, you, you, know, you kind of end up in a water situation that can be a little bit scary. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this leash on Jazzy. And uh, then we're going to stage an accident. And so I give Jazzy a chance to panic and I'll be right here to help her overcome her fear. Okay, so we're out in the boat. Oh my gosh, a big storm comes up. Good, or she falls in the pool. You know, whatever misfortune has befallen her. Good, oh my gosh. Oh, and she falls out. Oh my gosh. And so all we're doing here is teaching her not to panic. And so she hopped right back up on there, and that was awesome. Okay, so we'll let her have a little bit more time where she's just chilling. We'll move our boat around. She's doing great. Okay, good. And then lo and behold, something bad happens. Oh no! And she falls in the water, and we can use our leash to say, nope, that's not the way out. Just kind of guide her. Oh, you got to turn around, Jazzy. You have to turn around. Now, this is what I'm talking about. You see that she has decided that that's the way out, okay? And I have to convince her that she needs to go where I would like for her to go. See how she's fighting me a little bit there? Watch. I'm going to get her turned around. Now, once I can get her attention back to the boogie board, then that's what she'll try to do. I wish you guys could feel her heart right now. She's, <laughs> she's really worried. She's like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I'm going to make it. Good girl. <laughs> oh. and, then, and I know some of you at home are thinking, well, Stoney, that's so unfair. Listen, you know, what would be unfair is not taking this dog kayaking with me. And if uh, I can't get her to be safe around a kayak, then she's going to have to stay home, right? So listen, kids and dogs have to learn how to swim if you're going to take them and have any fun with them. Good, so she's out here. Very good. Now, over the course of a few days, guys, you'll go from this like this worried posture to they'll just get super chill and they'll enjoy the water just like everybody does. Okay, and we'll give her one more repetition. Oh no, she falls off into the water. Oh, now look, watch, she's, oh, she swam towards the boogie board that time. So that was awesome. She didn't panic. She didn't try to do her own thing. She said, okay, Stoney, I'm starting to trust you. I believe you if you're telling me that uh, coming back and getting to you and getting to the boat is the best thing. That's what I'll do. I won't run towards the bank. Get her leash situated. Oh, no. And there she goes right back to the boogie board again. Very nice. Okay, now what you're seeing here, guys, is... Um, like, I have a couple of different things that I need to teach her, okay? Number one, she needs to find me. Number two, when she goes to get onto the boat or the boogie board or out of the pool, she has to think about proper foot placement. So, like dogs sometimes, they don't really understand how to get their paws up and pull themselves up and over. So, let me illustrate that to you one more time. So, the dog falls off the kayak. She's got to come over here and learn how to get her paws on it. See right there how she just turned herself backwards? She has to learn how to pull herself up in a straight line. Otherwise, she's just going to be trapped on the side of the pool or on the side of the boat. And sometimes that makes it a lot harder to get to them. Good. I'm going to do that one more time for illustration. Good. Dog comes off the kayak. She comes back. Paws come up. I put her a little pressure on the back of her neck and help her climb. And then over the course of a, you know, a few weeks of practice, guys, like uh, you can like show them that boat over there, cameraman. Like say that John boat there. 
uh, like, you know, I, I can be in that John boat, let the dogs out of the John boat, and my dogs will just come climb right back up in there like a set of monkey bars. Now, now this dog's a little bit small for that, but you kind of get the idea. All right, we'll do it one more time. One more time. Very nice. Okay, and so she's being nice and calm and quiet. Wait for her to settle down just a minute. Very nice. Then I'll pick her up and uh, we'll get a different dog. Okay, Jazzy, you did great. All right, so now I have Ruth. Ruth was over in the sprinkler and the other pool with my daughter, and uh, so she's already wet, so we might as well put her in here. Now, same kind of things apply. We're gonna put her on our boat. And uh, basically, we're out boating and everything's going, you know, like it's supposed to go, okay? And then all of a sudden, oh no, a storm comes up and knocks us out of our boat. And Ruth tried to hang on, right? And all I want Ruth to do is like to be calm and let me help her back in the boat. Very nice, Ruth. So we'll give Ruth a couple of minutes to be on here and hang out, have a good time. Everything's going like it's supposed to go. And then, oh no, a storm comes up. Now see, Ruth started going over to the far bank, but I'm gonna be able to steer her with the leash back to the boat. Oh, and use my hand on the back of her neck, not to pull her into the boat, really, exactly, but just to, <laughs> ah, but just to give her a little helping hand. Very nice. You are smarty, Ruth. So we're out. Nice, leisurely day. Very nice. And then, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Ruth says, listen, storm or not, I'm not falling off the boat. So here comes the rough water. Here comes the storm. <laughs> Ruth says, I'm not going. <laughs> if you have a dog that sure-footed, maybe you don't have to worry about a storm. Okay. So we're going to have to make the storm worse. Oh, the storm's pretty bad, Ruth. And Ruth falls into the ocean. She tries to swim away. No, no, Ruth, come back. Come back. Come back to the boat. She's trying to climb up onto the boat. She's not exactly sure how, so I put my hand on the back of her neck, and I help her. Very nice. Now again, we'll test uh, Ruth's sure-footedness, because that's kind of funny. Oh, it's a storm, Ruth! It's a storm! And Ruth says, I'm not going. <laughs> oh no! But what happens if you do fall, Ruth? What are you gonna do? She goes to the far bank. I'm like, nope, you have to come find me. Come find me, Ruth. Very nice. She gets over here, a little bit of help. She's back in the boat, and she's safe. That's all I'm trying to teach her, guys. It's just, if you fall in the water, whether you're in the pool, or you're in the boat, the river, the lake, the ocean, whatever, calm down, look around, find your owner, find your boat, and uh, <laughs> don't take things into your own accord. And you'll have plenty of little things like that pop up because Ruth's like, listen, I found your boat enough times and I know where the dry land is. <laughs> but either way, she ended up back over here. So we'll get one more repetition just, just for that, Ruth. Just for you trying to cheat the system. You can't cheat the system. You got to come back to the boat. Come back to the boat. Very nice. Perfect. Perfect. All right, guys. Ah, well, that's all there is to drown proofing your puppy. Oh, that's right, Ruth. <laughs>